Well, one owner car guy, I don't know if these will end up in a series together or separate or what, but this is our 240 we're working on. There's a 300. This is buffing. Buffing 101. Yes, sirree. Now, I got a DeWalt, and it's a good buffer, and it's taken some lot of use. Um, you honestly don't need a DeWalt for what you're doing, and if you want, I would just honestly go to Harbor Freight and get one there. Now, this is a trick you're definitely going to want to utilize, and that is to knot this thing back through itself to where you don't yank it out as you're walking around. That's awesome. Um, now you can get a buffer. It's not this probably good for sure. Got a 30 day warranty though. I wear them out in about 28 days. But we buff probably about half that many cars. 15, 18 cars. Um, and we're awfully hard on our buffers. I mean it's just they never cool down. So basically I would just get one of them. Um, at Harbor Freight you can also get your foam pads. Now you want to start off with a nice wool pad and then the last you got your black foam pad. Now I forget the grit on this. Um, actually to be quite honest I forget the grit on all of them. Um, but basically you're scratching off paint is what you're doing. You're just scratching off paint. And you want to go in that trying to see if there's a grittage but I'll bet you this you're up to about 3,000 and you can feel it in them and if you just start off with this it'll actually look okay but this is gonna dig down and really get it okay now I believe we're ready um, and I want to show you our surface beforehand actually now this is my one of my first videos kind of doing it like this to where you I'm walking around doing things I just did the power washing one and that was a little odd to do. I'm going to show you a tip for not only just before you start but to clean out your wheel you want to rest it on your knee and kind of Trying to get all that in the camera there. Sit down on that. You know, it's hard. I got definite lots of things to do here. Well, that is the buffer, and I'm gonna let that ring. I just gotta gotta keep going, gotta keep going. Now you can see that this is very nice paint. Um, you wanna work in little sections, and I would say my section is gonna be something like that. But I'm probably going to start kind of like this. Um, I've got my product. And just a wax is not going to be what you're going to want to use on this. Um, I use a three stage on a lot. This one here, we're going to do a two stage. Um, on your first little run here, um, this buffing wheel ain't got nothing on it and it's dry and you don't want to scratch your paint up in it so definitely work it into it a bit look at that man I already got paint coming off and don't smack your hood like I just did there okay I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of buffing I don't know if you're gonna be able to see me from this or not and we're gonna do a two stage on this one that is not going to work, is it? Never thought of that.
Well, I'm gonna clean my lens here, as you can see. But as you can see, that also brought it out a bit. But your lens is just dogged here. So I'm gonna turn this off and clip it back in. And no, I'm not. You're just gonna have to live with seeing my shirt for a second. Probably some kind of weird sound or two also. But that should work. Oh yeah. And you can tell what we're dealing with now. Um, and you know, this is my first day out of the shop and I don't know where all the rags and stuff are. So, I'm gonna have to wait for Trent on that. Um, well, I'm gonna do a bit more here and then I'll clip it in when I get half the hood done or something. Make sure it on the edges here, roll it really nice and easy. And I'll give you a close up of that too. Just on an edge like that, if you push too hard, like, hang on, let me back this up here. If you push too hard right there, it'll wear the paint right off. Just kind of lightly let it roll. And remember, look at my pad now, by the way. And remember that the maximum, the most of your power is on this point. So this is just kind of flopping around out there. And when you push on the edge of this, and you like push down, you want to keep this thing level with a nice even pressure on this and push, push on it, depending on how much. When you get to an edge, you wanna let up and not push and let it glide. Just down on the flats and let it up and kind of glide over the edges. And the same thing goes for little ridges in your paint like this. This little ridge is quite a task if you've never dealt with it. And you can eat that paint right off. Um, Trent! You definitely want to, I need a rag, he's working, but I need a rag. Um, well, that's kind of a quickie. I need a couple of clean rags. I don't know where they are. I'm lost. Ha <laughs> right behind there. I knew it. I should have known. Thanks. Good thing it wasn't a snake. Now, as you can see, we've also got ourselves to an area here where this is looking pretty darn good. And I'm gonna go ahead and... I hear a diesel, you hear a diesel? Now, just showing you this, after a first stage, that this is basically how your paint's gonna look. And no, regular wax will not do this. Um, you can wax the heck out of your car. <clears throat> it ain't gonna do this. Be careful on this kind of stuff. And along this ridge, and along this ridge, as you can see, the hood is down. It needs to be adjusted up front. And without doing that, you gotta be careful buffing. Um, and it also shows you some of the things that you could do to improve your car when you are going over it like this. Now, like I say, this has no wax in it, so I'm not waxing it. This is a compound, and it's kind of gritty. And it's putting scratches beyond the teeniest scratches you can see in it. So, well, that is your start of this here buffing. And I'll tell you what, that is something else. And looking great. So, one owner car guy. Talk to you in a minute here. And make sure and rough this stuff up in between a bit too. And it keeps everything fluffier and keeps you, it'll give you a better job. 
that is one for sure thing. God, we only got that little corner and it's looking good. Well, as you can see, across that hood now is looking good, man. And you can hear the buffer whining away. We're just getting it done. And it is looking great. Um, I'm gonna show you down the sides here. You can just see the difference and reflections and it's so smooth, you can feel. Can you feel that? Feel that, go ahead, touch it, feel it. That's what she said. And it just looks great. So, another little tip for you on this. Well, as you can see across that hood, it's looking good now and he's buffing away on it and we're just doing it to it. Um, well, that is the side of this and I'm just kind of showing you how it looks after buffing it out. Another tip for you when you're doing it, you may as well buff the windows. Definitely get the buff on the windows. It'll add a lot and make it look better. Hang on one sec here. Get water spots off of it and stuff like that. It'll just give you a better look in the end. So, I'm gonna clip this in here in a second. And you'll see this thing getting buffed out. Look at that wheel. It's definitely the color of the car now. Wouldn't want to buff a white car with it. OneOwnerCarGuy.com This is a one owner 240 d Well, the black 300 has been first staged and has the 240 has also. I was trying to say as has the. And you can see some um, swirl marks. And you're going to get swirl marks more on this black. And it's not going to be a perfect paint when we're done here. This is, we're working with what we've got. Um, but the swirl marks is a lot of what comes out with the second stage of this. And totally different kind of product we use. As a matter of fact, I'll take them both with me over here as I go. And use a different pad too. I'm going to be using a foam pad. Now, Trent went ahead and opened my pad up before I could give you a nice little thing here and foam padded the wheels. And if you're going to do wheels and stuff like that, you definitely want to use a foam and like a lighter um, compound. But this one here, I'm going to kind of just give you a once around here, has been first staged and is looking good. And now we're going to do the second stage. As you can see, it's a totally looking, different looking paint job. And there'll be some things that we're going to touch up and everything on it. But the car is beautiful. And it's about done. So, cool. Well, that's about that. I don't know much else to talk to you about. Um, OneOwnerCarGuy.com And I'll clip this in with some other stuff. Well, as you can see, starting here, we're working with a totally different surface. And it's got pollen and such on it just from setting out. All the hills are in bloom, buddy. And I'll give you a little comparison there. That's what we're dealing with on the first stage and the second. Which is totally different. I don't know if you can tell, but if you feel it, feel that? <laughs> the first stage is a little bit gritty. In fact, it feels a lot of bit gritty in comparison. Um, and this is a less gritty um, pad as well. So, one thing important I'm going to have to take off to do is to get this thing just as centered as you can. Because the better it is centered, the better your pressure. And same thing we did last time. I like to put a little bit extra down and get it on the foam pad. Now, I overdid it a bit there, but same kind of thing. You want to smear it into your pad a bit. Ridges right in here, you're going to want to watch all that where you don't dig into it and make the paint come off.
or knock a hood ornament off. I've done that. And Tristan to grab a, he's got a fresh rag or? And you can see, it does a lot of difference. Um, it really, really takes a couple times at this to get the paint to where it should be. Um, you're basically putting one set of scratches in that are one size. And then when you come over with the second stage, you're scratching it up with some more scratches over the top of them that are not quite as big a scratch. Now you may know this, this may be your thing. Maybe don't be telling me this junk. Well, you're probably not the one I'm telling. I've had a lot of people ask about this kind of a video and I finally decided to take the extra time because when it all comes down to it, that's what it really is about, is time. And it's hard to get the time to do everything you want to or need to do. Harder to get the time to do the stuff you need to do for some reason. I don't know. But after this stage, you're down to such a different area that you're not going to get it to look just perfect by wiping it down like this. You got to get to the wash for it to really come clear. But when you see this done, you're going to be amazed. You can tell just from that there that it adds a, a certain deepness to it. Actually, it's not going to be able to be seen because I'm rubbing the wax all over it. But it does add a deeper, darker luster to it. And you can see, definitely see, the difference in the half of the hood I did there and such. Well, oneownercarguy.com. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. We'll talk to you. One Owner Car Guy. And this is the final result. Um, I'm sure people could take it a lot farther, and some do. Um, but this is what I've got here for this Mercedes on the paint and you can see It's just absolutely beautiful And it was nice before but it was just not <laughs> Not not like that. Yeah, that's all there is to it. And it's a lot of hard work um, Doing a car like this will take one person more than a day plain and simple um, It's more than a day's job If it's less than a day's job you didn't do it right, because we do it about more than a day, and we still, there's things that could be done to it. Um, beautiful car. You can see the full review on my channel. Make sure and comment, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. But this is the car after, and maybe I'll put some kind of before and after picture up as my thumbnail or something. One owner car guy for all sorts of unique one and two owner classic cars, Euro, Muscle, you name it. And just stuff like this. I do a lot of them. And make sure and check me out, subscribe, see my other videos. Over 1,200 of them here on the on my channel. And BeaglesPocket.com for all your miniature pocket beagles. Now I got a free car contest coming up, baby. And in this free car contest, as if the name didn't imply, I'm giving away a free car. That's all there is to it. You don't have to be subscribed. You don't have to be liking. You don't have to be commenting. You gotta do nothing except till it comes time to do something, and you'll hear about it. If you are subscribed, I tell you to sure help out for you, help your cause, because um, then you would be able to know when the contest came up and what it takes to do. So subscribe, like, comment. This is the detail video. Um, it's a two-part or three-part here by the end, I'm sure. And I just wanted to make sure that you've seen that. And we didn't do interior on this one. It was basically exterior and such, but because the interior on this one is clean as can be. In fact, I don't know if I even showed it, so I'm going to actually walk over here and just show you right now to where you see it. I put this stuff on it. Well, actually, this particular one Trent did, but I'm just saying that as a company thing, not as an eye thing. Well, that's the deal. <laughs> Beautiful car. Wasn't much detailing to do inside. I'll get one that's really, you know, needs some detailing inside, and I'll do another one of these. Did you like this kind of a thing? Was this kind of thing cool? Is it stupid? Should I do this with a better car? Should I do this with a car that's more ratty? 
I don't know. Let me know. Tell me what you think. I like talking. Subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. Nathan and OneOwnerCarGuy.com. I will help you find your next new car. See something you like on my channel? Hit me up because I'll make you a deal on it. OneOwnerCarGuy.com. BeaglesPocket.com. Ship cars anywhere in the world. That's me. We'll talk to you.